hello and welcome to another one of my lead code videos in this one we'll do lead code 2563 count the number of fair pairs this was part of today's weekly contest so let's go ahead right into it so basically we're given an array and an upper and lower bound and we need to find how many pairs in this array sum up to between the lower and upper bound inclusive right so in this case this array, the lower and upper bound are 3 and 6, so it's 6 because there are total 6 pairs where if you add the numbers, there will be between this bound. And obviously it's inclusive, right, because it says less than equal to on both sides. So what will be our approach to solve this problem? In order to do this, we basically need to sort the array, right? That's going to make things very easier because then you can keep track of like, okay, do I need to make my sum bigger or smaller, right? It's easier to do that when the elements are in the order. And if you look at the hint, that's actually like the first hint, right? It says sort the array in ascending order. So once we have sorted the array, it's going to be much easier to come up with an algorithm, right? So let's take this example here. And let's say we had this one. Now, we're given a lower and upper bound. So the next thing I did is kind of break this problem down into two pieces, right? So if, let's say, instead of two bounds, we just had one bound, like find how many pairs, right, sum to six, for example, right? So if we know how many pairs sum to six, or, you know, sum less than equal to six, if we know how to answer this question, then we can answer the question, how many pairs sum less than equal to two and just subtract these numbers, right? Because if we know how many pairs sum less than equal to six, out of those pairs, obviously some of the pairs would be less than equal to two. Th that means when we minus these, we'll get everything that's from three to six, right? So it's much easier to think about if we just have one number. And so let's just focus on solving like, okay, given an array, how do you, how many pairs there are that sum less than or equal to six? Now note that we we only need to find the number of pairs. We don't actually have to find the pairs. So we'll do a nice little trick to optimize for that, right? So let's say we had an array something like this, like one, two, three, four, four, five, seven, eight. And this is obviously after sorting. So what we'll do is we'll start two pointers, right? So one pointer will be here, one pointer will be here, right? So we'll say, okay, what, what we'll try to do is how many, we'll start from the right, we'll say how many people can eight match with, right, to get a sum less than or equal to six, right? So it says that, okay, eight can match with one. No, it can't because eight plus one is greater than six. So we know that if eight can't match with one, it can't match with anyone else, right? So we just move on to the next one. And then we do the same thing, seven and one, Obviously, it's greater than six, so it cannot match. So we move on to the next one. And we say, okay, five and one, yes, they match, right? So we'll, if they match, we'll say, okay, the number of people that five matches with is equal to one, right? Because we got one new match from this round, right? So this one moves over here. And then uh, we go to the next one. So we say, okay, how many can four match with, right? So we see, okay, four can match with two. Four can obviously match with everyone that five matches with, right? So it can match with one, obviously, and two, right? So, so the matches for four will be the existing matches plus the, like where the I is right now. So that will be basically two, right? Because it can match with four and two. And then we ask, okay, can four match with three? Well, no, it can't, right? So we stop and then we go here Right, so again, we'll say, okay, can four match with three? And the answer is no. So we, our matches remains as two because it can obviously match with everyone before that, right? And then we go to three, right? So this time the indexes are equal, right? So if the indexes are equal, we know that they can definitely match, right? Because otherwise they wouldn't have come together, right? Because otherwise this, we wouldn't advance this unless it can match with you know the previous one so when the indexes come together we know that they will definitely match so at this point w once the indexes kind of match then we know that okay for three the matches are two right because we've already reached 
everything we know before that is going to be a match because the indexes have already met, right? And then for two, the matches will be one, right? Because it can only match with things before it because we've already counted the pairs after it, right? And then obviously for one, the matches are zero because it's the index itself, right? And I think I missed it over here, but for eight and seven, there are no matches, right? So matches are zero because we didn't match with anything. And then these are the matches after that. So basically, if you sum up all of these, you'll find the number of pairs that, that match, right? Because we're, we're trying to find, okay, if this is one of the numbers, how many other numbers match with it? So yeah, let's just code the solution. Hopefully you'll see what's going on uh, more clearly. So first step, sort the array. Second step is, okay, get pairs with upper, right? And I'll use long because again, the return type is long. So we'd say pairs with upper is equal to, you know, find less than or equal to, which is basically nums and upper, right? So this function will do the algorithm we described here. And then we'll say pairs with lower minus one, right? And we need to do minus one because lower is inclusive. So for this one, we'll do lower minus one. So this will tell us everything that's less than equal to lower minus one. And at the end, we'll just return the difference between these two, right? So pairs with upper minus pairs with lower minus one, that will be our like pairs in between these two bounds. So now that we've solved that, let's go ahead and write our function that will actually do the algorithm that we described. So we have here our function signature. So we'll start i at zero and we'll start j at nums.length minus one, right? And what we'll do here is while j minus minus is greater than zero. So basically while we go through all of the values of j, we'll try to see what can j pair with, right? So first thing we'll do is while i is less than j, right? Because it can't be equal because, you know, the, the, when they're equal, it's not actually a pair, right? So it can only pair with things before it. So obviously at the end, we'll do I plus plus, but here we'll say and nums at I plus nums at J is less than equal to target sum, right? So while, while the sum of these two indexes is less than equal to the target sum, we'll increment I right and at the end what we want to do is obviously we need to keep track of our pairs right so we'd say pairs equal zero so now wherever i is that's how many matches we can have with the number right so we just say pairs plus equals i right but then there's a case where let's say as we're going to the left our i is already further down along right so in, in the case of let's say two when we when our j reaches two, we know that even though the i is at three, like it can't match with three in the sense that we've already counted three and two before when we were at three, right? So we now we should only count things to the left of it, right? So in this case, it matches with everything at the left. So what we'll tr what we'll do here instead is we'll take the minimum, right, of i and j, right. So that means when j is here, it will just pick the j uh, value as the pairs. And at the end, we'll return pairs. So let's run this and see how this does. All right, I have a typo here. Okay, I realize there's a bug here because this one is nums.length minus one and here we're doing j minus minus. So what I'll just do is j not equal to zero here and just do j minus minus at the end for simplicity. All right, accepted, let's submit. Perfect, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, cheers.